Good afternoon or good evening or whatever it is where you ever happen to be. I am Dr. Jackie Giuliano and welcome to Speed Reading for Life, an online speed reading program based on a decade and a half of in-class experiences. I've tried to create the best online experience possible to bring the amazing speed reading skills into your life and that's what we're going to do with this program. I want to spend some time setting this up and sharing with you some perspectives I have about why this program is important before we get going. First off, you should have a few tools of the trade with you. Hopefully you got a notebook with you and a, and a comfortable pen you're going to be taking notes along the way. You should always be taking notes about things that matter to you and things that make sense and resonate with your way of thinking. So make sure you have a notebook and a, and a pen handy. And you'll be able to access this class 24-7, anytime you want. You're also welcome to visit readfast.org, which is the main website for the read, speed reading program of the Center for Lifelong Learning that I run. There you'll find all sorts of information. You'll also find tools for speed readers of which you're becoming, practice tools that I'll talk about more as this presentation continues. All right, let's get going. If you got your notebook and pen handy, sitting in a comfortable spot, got your tools ready, then let's begin. All right, let's start out by talking there is a need for a speed reading program. And you've all experienced all sorts of symptoms, I'll bet, while you read. And think about for a moment your average reading experience that you have and what sort of things don't serve you. And I'll bet you they're on this list. A lot of people, while they read, they leap. I know somebody who has kept a book by the bed for the last 25 years. In fact, it's the same book. And she picks it up every night and takes a look at it and falls right to sleep. That's not the way it's supposed to work. People lose their place while they read. They forget what they read right after they read it. And then reading becomes a frustrating experience. And since all of your learning, whether it be at school, at home, or in the workplace, is pretty much tied to reading, if you're not a very good reader, then most people conclude that they're not a very good learner and basically not fit for school. And this is an erroneous conclusion to draw. The problem isn't with you and your brain. There's nothing wrong with you. Your brain is nimble and agile and able to learn new things all the time. The problem is that people were not taught to read in a way that supports the true design of your brain. Millions of people around the world are taught to read in a way that does not match the design of our brains. Not at all. And you'll see as this course unfolds, there's very specific reasons for that. So whether you were a good student or a poor one, it doesn't matter. Anyone can learn this process and become a super learner. So right now, I just like you to think for a moment about the journey you've had in your life as a learner. Did you do great in school but it was hard and a struggle and you worked super hard and you made all sorts of sacrifices but you got through and maybe you did a great job but it wasn't a lot of fun. Or maybe your time in school was not very pleasant at all. You didn't enjoy reading. You just couldn't quite get what the teacher was getting at. The, the chapters seemed impossible and you decided that school wasn't for you, you took another path. Wherever you stand in this spectrum, it doesn't matter. You can learn an entirely new way to read and decide for yourself what kind of learner you want to become. It doesn't matter if you're eight years old or 80 years old. The process is the same. I also like to mention that I've taught this class in so many different environments group settings for the general public, school settings, also in business settings. But one of the more interesting ways I've taught this program have been to executives, people that hire me to just teach them over the course of a couple of days, two quick three-hour sessions to these busy people. I've taught some people that everybody in the world knows who they are, and I can't tell you who they are because 
the trainers of these people sign non-disclosure agreements because they don't want people to know who trains them and they don't want people to use their names in promoting their business and I understand that and I tell you this not to show off but because something very important happens when I teach these kinds of people they never complain they never talk about how hard it is all they say is gimme 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 these new skills and then you can leave they have a mindset that just does not include the possibility of failure and I like to call it the unstoppable will to succeed it has nothing to do with how wealthy they are that's the first assumption you might make but rather it's a mindset sure there are times when things you decide to do don't work but they just pick themselves up figure out what happened and then start something new how can you get such a mindset by deciding right now right in this moment that you have it take a moment close your eyes take a deep breath and just say to yourself I too have an unstoppable will to succeed anything I can I do I can accomplish anything I try I can succeed if I fail I'll figure out why and start it again in that way there is nothing that can stand in your way there are no obstacles that could ever there are no obstacles that could ever get in your way very important take on that unstoppable will to succeed right now and then no matter how hard the speed reading program feels at times or how weird and how different it doesn't matter because you can accomplish anything you want and I'll be coming back to this theme more and more because it's so very important to not have a mindset that's anything other than true solid belief in yourself and we'll be talking more about this in the slides to come let me tell you a little bit about how the class is laid out you can see in the course curriculum all the lectures and all the different titles but I'm going to just tell you from a very high level how the class is organized so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little more about the issues that people have with reading to make sure that's all very clear and you'll be able to relate to that because you're experiencing these things yourself then I want to spend a few minutes talking about where this speed reading idea comes from it's a very interesting story and I think it's very important when you're learning anything new to know why you're learning it that way not just do things because you're being told to do them but to understand the origins and the sources of then we'll get into the speed reading techniques themselves there's four basic techniques I'm going to show you it's no one thing that's going to transform the way that you read and learn it's a it's a suite of tools really and we'll go through those one by one and you'll practice them along the way and it's they're not very complicated but they're going to seem really strange at first they're going to seem very odd and the reason for that is quite simple you've been reading the way you've been reading for in some cases decades depending on your age you've been doing it that way for so long more than just something you do it's become psychological conditioning it feels like it's in your bones it's like breathing but it's not it's just that you've done the same thing for so long and adding to this conditioning I think is a very important fact during your early schooling kindergarten first second third grade is when you learned how to read and by second and third grade the way you read is pretty much locked in now every other subject gets changed every year of school you learn new ways of doing things you learn new information but nobody ever changes the way that you read nobody tells you to read certain things in a different way so to a young person growing up your thought is probably that well this must just be the way you read it's the only way to read and so that you get this false impression that that's the only way to do it and then you do it that way repetitively for year after year after year so it's become psychological conditioning because of that I've had to build a number of things into this program that take care of that that give you ways of overcoming conditioning because the reading the way you read now has become more like a habit so we'll, we'll talk more about that in a little while but it's very important to realize that the difficulty of this lies only in your mind at times it's going to feel like this is hard and this is very strange 
but it's only because you've been doing it this other way for so long. And I'm going to show you very systematically a way to overcome that resistance and that conditioning. So just be patient and know that it can be and will be overcome. All right. Then we're going to talk about a new way of taking notes. The way you take notes now doesn't work all the time, does it? You probably go A, B, C, D, one, two, three, make lists, that kind of thing. And it doesn't always work. I'm sure there have been times during a, a lecture that you've attended where you've taken notes either in school or outside of school. And you're listening and taking notes for half an hour, 45 minutes. And then the lecturer says something that totally relates back to something they talked about half an hour earlier. But that thought is now on page two or three of your notes and disconnected from the initial thought on page one. And this starts to happen throughout the entire talk, especially for lecturers who are not very organized. And next thing you know, you have a pretty incomprehensible collection of notes. Also, people take too many notes. You're writing like crazy. You're trying to transcribe the lecture. And that's not really what notes are for. So we're going to talk specifically, uh, we're going to have a lecture later on about note taking. But I'm going to show you a way of taking notes, whether it's a 500 page book or a five hour lecture, all on one page. It's fantastic and you're going to really enjoy it. Once we finish up time and take all the pieces of the speed reading process we've talked about, and I'm going to put them together in a process that you'll be able to reproduce and practice. And I call this process the triple reading process for a very important reason. I want to tell you right now to get you thinking about it. Instead of going through the book once and assuming that you're going to remember it, which you don't, you're going to go through it three times, at least three, maybe more. Now, this is going to sound crazy to you at first because you already read slowly and now I'm telling you to spend three times as much time in the book, but it's, it's not going to be the same way you read now. It's going to be very different. Let me tell you basically what it's going to look like. The first pass through the book, you're going to go through really fast, flipping through pages every couple of seconds. And it's amazing how much you can pick up doing that. Then you're going to go back to the beginning and you're going to go through it again slower with a very intentional process I'm going to give you. And then you're going to go through a third time even slower. And what's going to happen here is that the meaning on those pages is going to start building up organically. The first pass, you get a big picture. The second pass, it's starting to get clearer. The third pass, you get more. You go back through again if you need to. This is very natural way of learning. Your brain loves this. At first, it seems odd but you warm up to it and your brain starts to really enjoy it. And I'll say much more about that later. Then we'll customize this process. There's different ways of doing it for different kinds of books. There's different reasons for reading things, different ways of reading different kinds of things. And we'll talk about all that. And then we'll practice it. And I will give you a practice plan, which will take you into the future. Before we go any further, I'd like you to sit quietly for a moment and really think about why you're here. Why are you taking this class? And because you want to learn speed reading, but it goes deeper than that. And take a moment and get your pad and pencil out and, and write down a few reasons why you are taking this class. I'm going to stop talking for a moment and let you, let you think about that and do that. Just write anything down that comes to mind. Now there's all sorts of different reasons why people want to read faster. But one thing we can all agree upon, and that is that you're here because you've decided for whatever sets of reasons that you read slowly, okay? But here's the thing. Most importantly, you are here because you have a belief that you can improve and change. And that belief means everything. Because if you don't believe it, if the things that I start talking about, you start to believe, then it will not work. There's no way it can. And this goes for anything in your life. If you start a project, if you start a job, if you start a class, if you start anything with the mindset that you're not going to make it, then you're not going to make it. 
This is the way our brains are wired. It's almost magical. And I'm going to talk a lot more about this because philosophers and poets and theologians and scholars of all kinds have been trying to tell us for centuries about this way that our brain works. And I'm going to spend more time on this in a little bit because belief has everything to do with it. So, yes, it's true that you can learn a new way to read, and believing that you can is vitally important. So just right now, adopt that unstoppable will to succeed mindset, the belief in yourself above all things, that you can change and you can learn and you can do anything that you want to do. And then there's no way that this class will be anything but successful. And we'll, like I say, we're going to focus on this a lot more later. All right, let's get clear what the expectations are for the class so we're all on the same page about what's going to be accomplished here. So the first thing is you're going to be learning an entirely new way to read, and that's important. This isn't just a series of tips and tricks. This is a whole new system for reading. The way you read now is going to be incorporated into that. So that will all become natural after a while. As a consequence of this process, you're going to read two to six times faster. No doubt in my mind that you will. Absolutely. And I'll tell you where that two to six comes from later. Also, very importantly, you have the potential to remember everything that you need to remember. I know right now memory seems like other things, but you know, it's just because you haven't had the right process to remember things. Your brain is very capable. And we're going to talk a lot about memory, and this, this course is all about that. But it turns out that you've got everything you need to remember a lot better than you have been. But also, there's so much information coming at you from every direction. It's impossible to learn it all, so you've got to be selective. You've got to be deciding all the time what you need to focus on. And this process is going to give you some very important tools for doing that. You're not going to finish this course and immediately feel good about it all and just charge right out there and be perfect at it you'll be able to you'll start working working at it but you're gonna have to practice you're gonna have to follow the systematic program here basically just everything you read after you finish this course here you'll read this way and eventually it's going to sink in but it, you're going to have have a little patience and and at least for for three solid weeks to really try to go at it. And that might be broken up by real life stuff, and I'll talk about that later. I'll come up with a realistic practice plan for you. But you gotta give it some time to sink in. But I guarantee you that if you read this, if you read this way, after 10 or 15 books of following this process exactly, it's gonna start to sink in. And you're gonna start to feel much more at ease with it. Now, it's not complicated. It's really a very simple process, but there's lots of research behind it. If you go to the readfast.org website, you'll find all sorts of links to over 100 scholarly papers in all sorts of different fields that shows this works. But also, i got to be honest, you're going to be able to go online and do some research about speed reading, and right away you'll find all sorts of things by, by legitimate researchers that try to tell you that speed reading is impossible. And you know what? There's millions of people that speed read. There's millions of people using the techniques that I'm going to show you. But you know what? That's okay. You've run into this before, I'm sure, where there's conflicting ideas, especially online. And that's not a big deal. It's just the way the human brain is designed. You're going to have some people believing one way, other people believing another way. And they might be smart, good people. The way to solve that is just learn to speed read and read everything and then you get to decide what's right and what's wrong for you. Don't wait for someone else to tell you. You have to figure it out and you just read everything, both sides of every argument and that's how you solve it. But above and beyond being able to read fast and read more, I want you to try to embrace something that I like to call becoming a master learner. I want you to learn this process so that you can take what society is throwing at us so that you can understand this complex world that we're in in which there's more information coming at us now than ever before in history and it's too much it's too much and it's not all relevant i need you to be able to decide what's important to be able to read it all and understand it all but 
to just figure out what you have to focus on and what's meaningful for your life. And that's what I mean by becoming a master learner. I need you to be able to take that voter information pamphlet that's going to come to you periodically and not be depressed by it, but rather be energized by it, knowing that in the course of an hour that evening, you can read the whole thing and visit websites and figure out your ballot and fill everything out. That's what the promise of this program and that's what it can really do for you. I want you to become a master learner. All right, well, that completes this particular lesson. Take a break. Reflect on what we've talked about before you move on to the next. If you got to go do something else, do it. The course is always going to be here, and you'll be able to come back to it anytime you want. All right, I will talk to you soon.